Hello, welcome. Welcome back again. Thanks for coming back. I know it's been a bit of delay. I'll explain about that a little. But enough of that. This bike is ready to show you. I think it's finished. Not finished everything I want to do, but it's ready to ride, hopefully. We're going to try and start it in a minute because I fully assembled it, but I haven't tried to start it. So I've got some petrol. I'm going to put some in. Battery should be charged. So we're going to try and start it up. So I hope that goes well. But before we do that, I'll just fill you in. I had an email quite a few months ago now, actually, from a lovely chap called Charles in Canada. And he recognized the bike. Because if you haven't seen any of the previous series, this is a stolen recovered bike. And it was pretty much, it was quite damaged. Every, the tank was damaged, the mud guards were destroyed, the side panels, pretty much every single part on it was scraped, damaged bent or missing. I'll try and put a picture up if I can find one. Should have one. But he recognized it as his stolen and recovered bike. And he wrote to me from Canada and he shared some pictures and it is the same bike. And he's shared some fabulous pictures. And now it's solved the mystery of how it did 7,000 miles in one year because he toured all around the UK, as you can see in these pictures. And it was his faithful workhorse and it was quite a shock to see it really because it was to me it was this beaten up bike but obviously in the pictures it was a beautiful halcyon classic and uh, his pride and joy i'm sure and when it was stolen one night in darlington which is in the north of the uk do we say north or north midlands we'll say the north either way stolen one night and his trip was over so it came to my hands then, after it was recovered by the insurance company, in a much sorrier state. And Charles got his insurance payout, so that's great. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't got his bike and he's got nothing. He's, he's okay and he's very happy for me to share his story and his pictures. So look at that, look at those pictures. That's amazing, isn't it? Seeing it all shiny, riding around. And it was called Bertie. So, he was this bike, this wreck to me, but suddenly it was alive and it had a name. It was quite sort of um, a bit of a moment because I thought, oh, I can't just treat it as a bit of junk. This is Bertie, <laughs> which is an unusual name. My wife's car is called Bertie, so I can't keep going around and calling everything Bertie. So I might call it Rusty Bertie or Rusty. I'm going to show you, I promise. So very soon because I'm desperate to see this start as well. So thanks very much to Charles for sharing his pictures and story. So now I really know what this bike's been up to and I hope he's happy. But either way, this video is a bit different from usual because I've assembled the bike but I haven't recorded it all. To be honest, it was just screwing on the various parts. It, I know that's what we do every week. But um, unfortunately, as life does, I had quite a setback last month and I just couldn't bring myself to possibly put a camera on and do anything. But I did want to be busy and I was very happy just plodding on with my stuff. So apologies, that's not a detailed video, but I'm going to give you a detailed look around the bike now. And then we're going to start it and hopefully tomorrow I'm going to take it for a ride and I'll do a video then as well. So just in a few days time after you see this, maybe even the next day, we'll have a riding video and see how it goes. And we'll go out to a local cafe because I can't wait to do some riding videos. And um, I hope you like it. So <laughs> brace yourself because here it comes.
There you go. What do you think? Shocked, I bet. But I love it. I'm not, I'm not just saying that because I made it. It's even better than I hoped. I just love how old it looks. It just looks furry, and it kind of is furry. This finish is quite raw, it's still developing. Now, if you just tuned in, you might be thinking, oh, WTF is going on. This guy said he's, you know, rebuilt this crashed bike, and it, it looks, looks worse than when he started. Yes, yes and no. All the core bike is beautiful. Remember, this is all powder coated, black parts, this is all polished. <laughs> but the cycle parts have got the rusty paint. Distressed finish, because I just really wanted it to look like that. And all the little holes. I'll show you around with some close-ups, and I'll show you all the little bits and things that it had to do. But I do really like it. Can't wait to get this outside and have a go on it. God knows what people will think. That doesn't matter. Because it really suits me, I think. We'll find out on the ride, won't we? Come and have a look around. Here we go. Let's go handheld. So obviously, apart from the rusty paint finish, and when I say rusty paint, I really do mean rusty paint from rustypaint.com, which I'll leave a link to, which has got particles in this hardened paint that rust. So the metal isn't rusty. The paint on top is rusty. And all these parts were damaged, obviously, so I filled these. And we had all dents in this, so it's kind of... I haven't taken something nice and destroyed it. I've taken something destroyed and um, destroyed it more oh, than this. So otherwise, what's notably different from a classic is obviously we've got these bloody big tires, which are about an inch and a half more in diameter, about 30 millimeters, which doesn't sound like much, but they are. <laughs> they are noticeably bigger. If I stand back, I notice it looks a bit slightly different and that's because at the front here the front mud guard didn't fit over the wheel but because I had a spare mud guard I've had to make these little stilts they're just um, bits so essentially I've cut I had another mud guard the destroyed one I just cut the bracket off and have bolted it to the original bracket, so on your classic 350, this hole, where's my finger? This hole here is what should be there. So it's sat up on this little stilt, which has the good side effect of making the, um, the mudguard concentric with the, the white wall as well, which is really nice. Because even if it did fit, it was kind of hiding the white wall and you didn't get that lovely ring going on. Of course, the other side effect of that is the mudguard stays also didn't work. Now that hole there, I know I added all these holes, but that hole there is in the original hole where this mud star, mud guard stay goes. So all I've done is luckily there was enough length, drilled a little hole, So that's why it looks kind of like it's got, let me shuffle back, like it's got lowered suspension. That's got lowered suspension, but what it has got is a heightened mudguard or fender. And I was thinking, oh my God, now it's going to hit the front of the engine. Especially when you turn the wheels like this. I thought, oh, well, it's going to hit now. But I've bounced on the suspension as hard as I can and it gets nowhere near. So. Win-win. And also, we've got the underplay, under tray. It's not a genuine one. It's one of the cheap copies, which you can see from it being all bent. 
but I think that's the last of its worries, obviously. What else has it got going on? Obviously, because I couldn't stick stickers on top of the rusty paint. Just a few pounds from India, 10 pounds, I think, for a pair of brass bullet badges. Obviously, it's not a bullet, it's a classic 350. But seeing as the new bullet is a classic 350, look, it's just a bullet now, okay? Just got a little decal on there. So you've got the black paint in the engine. You've got the Royal Enfield performance exhaust. I don't think they call it performance exhaust, but it's um like a straight through one that's still got the baffle in. I haven't heard it. I haven't even heard this run. This might not even work. Rear mud guard fitted okay. Well, it seems to. I've bounced on the suspension and I can't make the wheel hit the mud guard, so win win. Now the rack is a bit unusual. I saw it on eBay from India. Now most of the time when you add a rack to a classic 350, it's like the one on a meteor one where it locks into where the seat mounts and there is suspension mount and then it kind of hovers. And that's the one people would usually be fitting. This is called a C5 style rack, which I think is a historic type of Royal Enfield. And it looks really vintagey, because as you can see, it doesn't lock under the seat. It fastens into the seat belt. And if we focus, there's this little metal strap that goes around the mudguard frame. So that looks really old, which kind of works. Now what else we got? So we've got a standard low ride Royal Enfield seat. But I had a seat cover made by Chaos Customs here in South Wales. I'll leave a link to them as well. Diana's done an amazing job putting this Bentley stitching on top. Again, anything to make it look old. We've got the heel and toe shift and the classic pegs. I didn't have an ignition surround, so we've adapted this um, brass one. When I say adapted, I mean we mauled it in a lathe that was so not up to the job. And what's nice about that, it started to um, tarnish. Remember how lovely and shiny it used to be? It's got this lovely tarnished brass look. And again, that's kind of working. It wouldn't have been good if it was all shiny. And in fact, shortly, these brass ones will start to um, turn as well. But that's fine, because I'm looking forward to see how it develops organically. And you've got the Royal Enfield the sprung seat kit I put in as well. I actually bought that for the um, Meteor. If you haven't seen the Meteor series, that is a Meteor, but it's got a classic 350 seat bracket. So effectively, how this rear is all mounted is exactly the same as classic 350. Because they're the same frame, same part number. Absolutely identical. I'll leave a link to the Meteor series if you want to see that one. And these bar end mirrors, they're only a few pounds, they're only about seven pounds, I think. I just saw them off. I just got the same ones, just for a bit of continuity. I wanted to keep them low down. Again, we'll find on the ride tomorrow if they're useless, useful or useless. I love that grill at the front. And in fact, this was the only undamaged. <laughs> original part. You can see it's still got the black metallic paint because that was a halcyon black. But everything, every other finished part you can imagine. 
the casket bars, everything was was damaged. So there we are. It's on its big tires, it's on its rusty bits. Let's put some fuel in. See if it starts up. Why does it look very stupid? Stupid error. Stupid error? Right, I've got a nice 10 litre can because I want to make sure the fuel pump is nice and covered up. So apparently they don't like being left partially covered because the fuel helps to keep the fuel pump cool. So that can't be that important because otherwise you can't just ride around with a gallon in your tank. There's also a point of having capacity. So anyway, let's put a bit in. Check for leaks. I'm fairly confident everything's where it should be. Idea what's about to happen. Obviously, the mic is with me, so um, you should hear this. So, power on. Now I'm going to prime this a few times to get the petrol through. Oh, fuel, fuel gauge is working. And you'll hear the pump now. Sounds quite loud in here, but I am indoors. But the hell, that's quite loud actually. Engine's nice and smooth though.
it's done. I can't believe it. It starts, it runs. I'm not convinced by that silencer. I'm indoors, it sounds a bit blatty. So I might put the original silencer back on. But we'll get outdoors, we'll have a go. And we'll see what that's like. Now, I'm out of time today, but tomorrow is gonna to be a good weather day. I'm gonna take for a good ride and put the cameras on. I'm gonna find a cafe and we'll do a proper review of this bike. Hope it all works well. So in a couple of days, I'll follow this up with a ride and update. So let me know what you think. Let's get this out.